let's start with the uh, uh, Clarin Cafe uh, of today. We will have our cafe this afternoon with um, the Czech node in the Clarin network, uh, which I think is something to look forward to because they have a nice conversation prepared for you, uh, uh, including some uh, local sweets. So let's start with um, uh, a short introduction. Um, the session of today has been organized uh, by the uh, uh, Claria Czech Lindat team or Lindat Claria Czech team, together with the um, uh, National Coordinator of Clarin, Professor Eva Hajikova from uh, the Institute of Formal and Applied Linguistics at Charles University um, in Prague. Uh, my name is Francisca Dion, uh, I'm uh, the Clarin Director. So the plan for today is uh, uh, on this slide, you may have seen the schedule, um, uh, a handful of interesting contributions from um, uh, people from the organizing team and, and uh, other notes in, uh, in the Czech Republic. Um, and I would like to take the opportunity to brief you, briefly take you through um, uh, a short introduction into what Clarin is. So about, uh, we call this uh, Clarin 101. Of course, you can also find lots of these pieces of information and other stuff on the Clarin website. So make sure you find the link uh, if you want to, meet, to know more. So, a typical way of presenting Clarin is to just use these eight bullets. So first of all, Clarin is an abbreviation and it stands for Common Language Resources and Technology Infrastructure. Clarin is uh, a so-called ERIC, which is a European uh, legal entity set up uh, by the European Commission uh, under um, uh, the umbrella of the S3 program. I won't bother you with that, um, but it's, um, the formal context in which we operate. The purpose of Clarin is to uh, support researchers. It's a research infrastructure. And uh, the mission of Clarin is to provide easy and sustainable access for scholars in the humanities and the social sciences primarily, but also beyond. So everywhere where uh, language data uh, can play a role in the support uh, of researchers, um, we uh, would like to uh, find our users and to provide them with support. Language data can be in uh, any relevant modality, written, spoken, video, multimodal, or whatever um, uh, would emerge in the coming years. Uh, we also provide access to advanced tools for the discovery, exploration, exploitation, annotation, and analysis of uh, language data. Um, and we support the combination of uh, data sources, irrespective of where they are located, because Clarin is a distributed network of data centers. Clarin has no data uh, uh, at the central level. Uh, we have a few central services, such as the single sign-on environment, where you can access um, the infrastructure and find your way through the data and the services. But um, uh, in principle, the contributions come from the national uh, consortia that have joined Clarin and other centers that have connected. And uh, today we will see the contributions from uh, the Czech Republic. Clarin is also uh, an ecosystem for knowledge sharing and uh, something that may be interesting for uh, some of you. Um, Clarin is ready for the integration in the European Open Science Cloud, which is a new uh, phenomenon in the ecosystem. Some of the services of Clarin have already been integrated. Um, in a bit more detail, zooming in on uh, the geographical spread and uh, the diversity, so we are a consortium consisting of 21 countries and three observer countries. Um, you see uh, the dark shaded uh, countries here. These are the full members and the light blue ones are the observer countries and spread over 
the map, including uh, South Africa and uh, part of uh, the United States, we see with the little dots indicated where the Clarence centers are sitting. Uh, a very important feature of uh, the way in which the Claren infrastructure structure has been implemented is the fact that we is the emphasis we put on interoperability. So all the data sets uh, comply with a specific metadata standard, um, which helps us to harvest uh, the metadata uh, and that the harvested metadata is the starting point for uh, the exploration of the data that is available. Here you see a schematic overview in, in all the various centers, you, you will find data sets that uh, uh, comply with the standards that we have agreed. Because of this uh, alignment of standards, it's possible to harvest the metadata and to uh, make them searchable in the um, uh, service that we call the Virtual Language Observatory, the VLO. Here you can search um, based on facets of the various data sets, the many, many data sets in many, many languages uh, for material that is of your interest. And um, then uh, several services are available that help you uh, to figure out which anal analysis tools or other uh, tools for the processing of language data can be applied to the data that you would like to work with. This is done in what we call the language resource, resource switchboard, a matchmaker for data and tools, which takes into account um, the, the language of the data and the functionality available for that data. And of course, also scenarios of use. We also comply with the principles of FAIR data, um, which is a bit more than just interoperability, um, but you will hear more about that later. Um, as, we, as I said, the uh, Claren infrastructure is also functioning as a, uh, an ecosystem for knowledge exchange. Here you see a list of the instruments we have for that. Uh, first of all, uh, some of the centers function as a knowledge center, so they don't provide access to data per se, but you can go there for information about uh, several topics, such as how to do OCR, uh, everything about uh, a specific language, uh, uh, um, uh, everything about dependency trees, etc. So the, the, the knowledge centers have a topical focus. We collect video lectures for uh, all the sessions, the online sessions that we organized and previously of the live sessions that we had in the days of conferences. Um, we have funding instruments uh, for all kinds of things, including events that you people in uh, the community would like to organize and for which you would like to have some additional funding. We hope that we will see more of the applications for this instrument soon, because right now uh, no events are possible, of course. There is um, funding for workshops, there's funding for the development of training materials. Uh, if there is need for um, exchange of information that requires traveling, uh, there are mobility grants. Together with DARIA, which is another infrastructure for the humanities, we have uh, a digital humanities course registry with interesting information for those who want to travel around uh, as a student. Um, and we are building a network of trainers. Here are a few of the uh, specific pages on our website where you can find additional information. Um, so I would uh, welcome you to take a look and let us know if there's anything you would like to understand better or be informed about in a more specific way. Um, but today, uh, I recommend you to uh, enjoy uh, the sweets and, and the talks that the uh, Czech people will share with us today. Mm -hmm.